بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم I'm very warm welcome to your communication skills class again today we are going to talk about thoroughly verbal and non-verbal communication skills and in the non-verbal and the verbal communication skills we will see thoroughly that how both of them they are similar to each other yet they are different to each other we will see and we will try to define the two categories verbal communication and non-verbal communication in their terms so that we can get to know that how you can apply them in your practical life so before we begin with today's lecture let's quickly recap that what we have done in our previous lecture if you remember the previous lecture basically was about uh, explaining the verbal communication and non-verbal communication which uh, uh, basically has something to do with uh, 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 we kept on defining these two terms on the, uh, on two parameters uh, the first parameter is your verbal communication that you um, must have known by now that as been we had been you know trying to define the two categories uh, simultaneously uh, you must have known that the verbal communication uh, has that chunk uh, uh, which has something to do with your uh, communication uh, with, with your communication through your words uh, through your voice and sometimes um, uh, through uh, written expressions as well so this is what you call verbal expression however on the other hand the non-verbal expression has something to do with your non uh, uh, non uh, visible gestures that can be or that do not include your voice now uh, since your voice channel is not included in the non-verbal communication so uh, the question is that how exactly you communicate uh, in the non-verbal communication you communicate through your eye contact through your uh, facial expressions uh, through your hand movements through uh, through all uh, those communication that does not involve any words in it so words can be spoken or words can be written uh, involve your verbal communication and the uh, and the kind of a communication that does not involve any words is known as your non-verbal communication that can happen through through your uh, hand movements uh, that can ho happen through your uh, facial expressions and so on uh, so uh, we will uh, today uh, uh, try to you know thoroughly describe verbal communication and non-verbal communication thoroughly but before uh, we actually try to explain verbal communication and non-verbal communication it is really very important that you understand the language structure and for understanding the language structure let's quickly see that uh, how uh, you can draw this language structure um, as a whole or how you can you know elaborate the things in your language structure as um, uh, as a whole in your practical life so let's uh, begin with first of all describing the linguistic structure and how do we divide the linguistic chunks into your verbal communication and your non-verbal communication so uh, let's try to draw the structure of the linguistic structure and I would try to uh, tell you and I would try to define uh, in terms that how uh, your language is different from uh, your uh, non-verbal behavior so uh, if you say that this is going to be your uh, language structure let's draw uh, the sequence and let's draw the structure of our language that basically starts with the smallest sound unit that is known as phoneme now the word phoneme basically has been derived from the word phone the word phone basically means sound so uh, basically the word phoneme uh, once it mean, means the sound uh, the it is basically the smallest sound unit in any language uh, that is attached to any kind of a language for example it can be Urdu it can be English or it can be any other language now if we take the example of English language since our main communication is going to be in English uh, so we are going to see that how uh, do you define these sounds in English language or English uh, alphabets uh, now uh, you have the small smallest letters uh, that start from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and so on. So all of these uh, initial letters or all of these separate letters are basically the sounds of the language which are known as phonemes. So phoneme is the smallest sound unit that's the smallest sound unit of any language uh, that uh, uh, can be uttered or that can be you know heard uh, so uh, the study of phonemes is basically known as phonetics 
So uh, this is how your structure of the language basically starts. You actually uh, receive uh, your sounds by receiving your sounds. You can actually tell uh, that uh, this words mean this or this words means that. So this is how you actually try to you know define the smallest sound unit in any language. Uh, the combination of two or more phonemes is basically known as morpheme. Now, if I combine two or more phonemes like uh, now morpheme is basically the combination of two or more phonemes. So, uh, morpheme basically is the combination of two or more phonemes. Now, let's see the example here. For example, I add uh, two uh, individual uh, fonts together like L and Y. Now, if I add uh, two individual fonts together like U and N, uh, I and N, and then... Uh, mm, so uh, this is how uh, I keep on you know defining them and this is how I keep on adding them together. What basically I am trying to do is now this LY, this IN and this UN does not stand on their own and the, they do not you know kind of uh, do not provide you the complete meaning. But what exactly they are once they are going to uh, connected with the stem word or the word in any language they would possess a meaning. Now if this is your stem word and this with with it uh, maybe you have something before it so that would be known as prefix and if you have something that is attached after the word that would be known as suffix so if you attach a prefix to the word or if you attach a suffix to the word the stem word would automatically be understandable by the uh, or would automatically provide you the gift different meaning so prefix and suffix once they are attached to a uh, stem word they convey you a proper meaning otherwise if prefix and suffix they are standing in isolation they won't convey you a proper meaning like for example I write down my stem word is complete which means something is full that is something uh, that is uh, complete in itself now if I add the word in and if I add the suffix ly so it would become the word in completely now it means that it would convey you one complete word however if you see at this prefix and suffix uh, on its own you would see that these two uh, categories uh, they do not def uh, stand on their own uh, thus uh, they are known as the morphemes which is basically the combination of two and more phonemes uh, so uh, I hope that you must have learned that what exactly is a phoneme and what exactly uh, how do you define a morpheme and a phoneme now let's rub it out for your convenience so that you, are, you don't have uh, so much to look at the board while we are you know trying to uh, define each and everything on our own. So uh, that was about the smallest sound unit of the language and uh, the combination of the two or more smallest sound units. Now the third category or the third step or the third letter, um, uh, the third step in the whole letter is known as the word. Now, uh, phonemes and morphemes and uh, uh, they combine together to give you words. Words basically are defined as those categories in the language which possess a meaning. So in any language, uh, those categories which possess a meaning are known as words. The combination of words uh, can uh, deliver you sometimes the clauses and sometimes the phrases so uh, a clause is different than a phrase uh, in a way that your phrase it sometimes or it always conveys you the complete meaning uh, however the phrase cannot convey you the complete meaning like for example if I want to uh, say uh, or if a friend says uh, if you ask your friend where are you going and your friend replies back to you to the market now this to the market has something to do with uh, you know providing uh, uh, you uh, the concept or providing you the answer that he is going to the market but but if you see uh, this uh, uh, clause uh, to the market in isolation, you would see that this does not stand on its own and that cannot provide you the meaning. However, if uh, you um, add a verb in it, going to the market, that would automatically uh, convey you the complete meaning. So your phrases, they, convey, uh, they are conveyed through verbs. Uh, verb is a word which shows an action and clauses, they, are, uh, they, are, uh, you know, they do not convey you the proper meaning of the whole uh, um, sentence. Then your clauses and phrases they combine together to give you sentences. 
Now sentences have one ideal length that uh, falls between 20 to 25 words. So an ideal sentence should fall between uh, 20 to 25 words. And the combination of sentences is known as a paragraph. A paragraph, remember, should not be more than 80 to 100 words. And then you have the longer texts that are also used in the daily conversation. Now, uh, we've been talking about the verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Uh, if you start uh, communicating uh, from word uh, to your text, it means that you are communicating through your verbal expressions. Or they are basically involved in your verbal expression since your meaning is clear to the next person. However, sometimes you uh, uh, you communicate through sounds uh, which are familiar like yum, ooh, eh. And these kind of sounds which do not actually convey you the meaning, uh, but uh, they are kind of expressions, which are the spoken expressions in any language. Uh, so uh, they are uh, those uh, kind of the verbal communication, uh, which can differ from situation to situation, or which are basically dependent on situation, depending on the sound, the utterance of the sound uh, that you are, uh, you know, uttering in front of the uh, audiences. So this is the language structure that is really very important for your verbal expressions. However, if you talk about your non-verbal communication none of this category as we have discussed uh, on this board is involved in your verbal communication so if you are using a phoneme if you are using a morpheme if you are using a word clause phrase sentences paragraph or text other than that if you are using your hand movements your facial expressions your eye contact uh, your body movements uh, that uh, this is what you call uh, non-verbal communication so in your verbal communication all these categories as written on the board would be involved however in your non-verbal communication uh, none of them would be involved in the next lecture we will also thoroughly try to you know explain it uh, in a proper way with the examples uh, so that you can uh, get to know the idea that how uh, do you define the linguistic structure and how do you actually study the language uh, which is basically the conversation of uh, people which is between the sender and the receiver uh, so we would see that how uh, you can basically uh, define that and how you can actually you know differentiate between the verbal and the non-verbal communication in your language. So uh, to move on, let's uh, discuss uh, that what is the verbal communication. Now we may often think that having a good communication skills is all about the ability to speak. Now if I say that someone possesses a good communication skills, uh, I uh, would you know relate his or her communication with only speaking speaking uh, does uh, your communication only has something to do with your speaking or all the other skills are also involved basically the concept that we have is that uh, our uh, language or we uh, we would become a good communicator if we have or if we possess good speaking skills or uh, we also think that our communication is all about speaking we are basically right because uh, but only 50% uh, right because verbal communication has another very important part that is your listening so don't think that your communication or uh, you would be become competent in your communication if you possess good speaking skills uh, your communication would only be complete if you also possess good listening skills so your speaking and your listening uh, would uh, give you a good verbal communication. So your verbal communication basically is the combination of your speaking as well as your listening. So uh, listening as well as speaking are two major categories which would make you good communicator. So this is how you define communication or this is how you define a good verbal communication that would involve your speaking would automatically since I said in the beginning that all of our uh, speaking or all of our communication skills are interrelated or integrated with each other. So in other words, it means that if my speaking is good, it is because I am a good listener. If I would listen to uh, the stuff more, uh, the more I would get familiar with the sounds of the words and the more automatically my pronunciation pronunciation would get better and then I would become a good speaker so this is how all of them they are interrelated uh, the more I would 
uh, you know practice writing the uh, the more I would read uh, the more I can write good so this is how all of them they are connected together speaking is related to or is connected with your listening uh, your uh, writing is connected with your uh, reading so the two receptive skills have two productive results that is there or that are there in front of you for your for becoming a good uh, communicator you need to listen first and then you need to speak so this is the rule and uh, uh, keep uh, or note down this rule in your notebook or into your mind so that we can proceed further so I hope that you have grasped the idea that the more good listener you are going to be uh, the more good speaker you would become and the more good listener and the more good speaker you are going to be the more active verbal communicator you would automatically become so before we understand uh, that what exactly and how exactly you are supposed to speak in front of the number of the audiences or uh, how to speak efficiently or become a good verbal communicator it is really really very important that you understand the different kinds of listening now there are different kinds of the listening the first one is appreciative listening now as the word itself indicates that you are listening for appreciation and uh, now you listen to songs you listen to uh, different uh, debates uh, you listen to different people for appreciating them or you listen to also different presentations in business for appreciation now uh, if you relate uh, this thing again to your business scenario as all of you belong to your business world it is really very important that you understand what this appreciative listening is like now if you are listening to if you go to any other company and you uh, listen to uh, uh, their presentation about the product that they have recently launched now that kind of a listening would become an we would become an appreciative listening the second kind of uh, listening is known as empathetic listening where you stress on where you emphasize on uh, listening to the thoughts of the reader uh, uh, bringing in empathies about them the third uh, category is known as comprehensive listening uh, you uh, listen to some stuff for comprehension or uh, you listen to some stuff for comprehending uh, there is a fourth category that is known as critical listening which um, has something to do with you know critically evaluating or picking up the good or the bad qualities of the piece uh, or the of the piece of hearing that you are actually listening to then the fifth category is uh, sympathetic listening where you uh, listen to people for sympathizing or uh, to sympathize with them uh, so these are the uh, different kinds of listening and we'll try to you know discuss some of them one by one so broadly speaking listening may be classified into sympathetic listening and empathetic listening that would be our main uh, focus of uh, our daily life as well as our business scenario so now let's try to see their examples also the first category of listening is known as sympathetic listening in sympathetic listening we care about the other person now uh, the care is there uh, we care about the other person and show this concern in a way we pay close attention and express our sorrow uh, for their ills and happiness at their joys so uh, you basically in the uh, sympathetic listening you basically uh, care about the next person you are basically concerned about them uh, you uh, express uh, your uh, you, uh, you are being expressive or you had been you know revealing your feelings about um, uh, since you are concerned about uh, whatever how they are feeling if they are happy you would you know express your happiness and your joy if they are sad of course you would express your uh, sorrow and your grief towards them so this is what you call that you are actually concerned about them and actually you care about them so in sympathetic listening you are basically concerned and you reveal your sympathies uh, through your expressions in other words there is a sharing of feelings this is really very important so let's underline that so in sympathetic listening you since you care and since you are concerned about uh, other person's uh, um, uh, sorrows and other person's happiness so in other words uh, you would you know express your personal feelings and your personal gratitude towards them uh, so uh, this kind of a listening is also known as uh, sharing uh, of feelings uh, so uh, once uh, uh, just remember with this s s for sympathetic s for sharing so uh, uh, once we mean that we are actually sharing it means that you are being very concerned so you are expressing your feelings and emotions now there is an example of the sympathetic listening now for uh, now on your way back from office you slip and fall and hurt your back when you reach home your family members feel for you actually they are concerned about you and actually they care about you 
they share your hurt feelings and maybe even shed a tear in sympathy now uh, this they would share with you they would share the story that how will you, how did you fell down and what exactly happened and they would ask you to you know tell you the whole story now if they've known the whole story they would express their emotions and their feelings uh, uh, through uh, by being sympathetic with you maybe they would share a tear or they maybe they look very really very uh, sad uh, to hear that you have fallen down on your way back from office now the first uh, sympathetic listening was sharing listening and the second category is known as empathetic listening uh, when we listen empathetically we go beyond uh, sympathy to seek a truer understanding of how others are feeling so it has a deeper down or a deep understanding or a truer understanding of how others are feeling this requires excellent discrimination and close attention to emotional signals now as uh, you are supposed to you know uh, discriminate uh, excellently and with the close attention between uh, to judge uh, or to you know identify the or to draw your truer understanding of things when we are being truly empathetic we actually acknowledge what they are feeling so uh, when you are being truly empathetic you actually acknowledge uh, other person's feeling in order to get others to expose these deep parts of themselves to us we also need to demonstrate our empathy in our demeanor towards them listening sensitively and in a way that encourages self disclosure so sometimes once you are trying to develop the better understanding of the uh, scenario or the situation that is being portrayed right in front of you uh, what exactly you are supposed to do is to put yourself into the situation and see that how the next person is feeling that is to you know be empathetic with them uh, to get the truer picture uh, that has been revealed in front of you so uh, this is um, uh, one way of you know listening sensitively and in a way that encourages self disclosure now let's see the example and you would you know and be able to clearly define that what and how uh, do you develop this clear understanding now on your way back from office you slip and fall and hurt your back you visit your doctor your doctor does not share your feelings he does not reject and trifle your feelings but on the contrary he acknowledges your feelings totally and treats you for for your injuries here there is no sharing of feelings but acknowledgement of feelings so your empathy has something to do with acknowledging the how the next person is feeling like for example uh, let's read the example again and let's try to find out those uh, situations uh, in the, or or that very particular situation in this example that clearly defines that you are not exactly sharing the feeling but you are acknowledging the feeling on your way we back from office you slip and fall and hurt your back you visit your doctor instead of going home and sharing your thoughts and feelings with your family your doctor does not share your feelings he would not share a tear neither he would cry over that you have fallen down and how you're feeling he does not reject or trifle your feelings he would not you know totally reject or um, you know uh, put them away that you are in a pain he would not do that but on the contrary he would acknowledge your feelings totally and treats you for your injuries so he would agree with you or he would acknowledge that whatever you are saying is right and at the same time he would you know uh, treat you for your in, uh, injuries so he th this acknowledgement of your feelings is one important aspect that you are supposed to see uh, once you talk about the empathetic listening now hey, there is no sharing or feeling but the acknowledgement of the feelings now empathy for acknowledgement and sympathy for sharing now let's move on to the next slide and see that for effective verbal communication uh, skills we need to develop our skills at empathetic listening now for better uh, um, uh, you know in your business scenario for the better understanding uh, or to uh, you know uh, for uh, effective uh, verbal communication skills you are supposed to become the empathetic listener rather than the sympathetic one because you are supposed to acknowledge what others have to tell you not to you know share your feelings and emotions with them and how do we do it first of all we would need to acquaint ourselves with the parameters that constitute empathetic listening while evaluating someone's speaking skills so uh, uh, your listening is basically related to uh, or is con uh, connected with how the next person is speaking to you so uh, both of them they are uh, strongly connected now empathetic listening um, uh, you would 
check for all those parameters that constitute empathetic listening while evaluating someone's speaking skills. Now, if they, they would be, uh, um, uh, you would, uh, once you are going to go into your practical lives and your business scenario, yeah, there would be a lot of people who would be coming to you uh, with their complaints that my product is not working well and my product is not good, working good. Now, you are not going to sympathize with them like, oh, 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 we are sorry and I really feel for you that this, your product is not working. No. This is not going to be the way. What exactly you are going to do is that you are going to ask them questions about how uh, is it not functioning well and you are going to check those parameters on which you can empathize with them, uh, on which you can acknowledge whatever they are saying. Okay, all right. Uh, this product is not functioning well. Why is it not functioning well? Uh, you are supposed to you know, ask them questions for that. Like the way doctor asks questions for from the patients to identify and to you know diagnose their problems or their illness and to cure their uh, illness so this is how uh, this uh, verbal communication can become effective if you are being empathetic in your business scenario now there are uh, some parameters of evaluation uh, first of all uh, the speed uh, speed is the number of words per minute that how actively or how efficiently the next person is talking according to the speed rate you would tell that how much the, or you would you know empathize with the next person clarity if audible and uh, is free of distortion so uh, there should be the clarity in the voice as well uh, another parameter is pronunciation and that is the utterance of the speech don't worry we are going to discuss each of the category one by one in detail in the upcoming slides also i am just right now trying to explain each and every term to you in words then the next category is uh, or the next parameter is familiarity that is the acquaintance with the words that is being used uh, between two speakers uh, maybe uh, uh, the one speaker is speaking in English and the other speaker do not understand English very efficiently so this is what you call the acquaintance with the words uh, that the next person is using punctuation that is the use of um, uh, that is the use of the various kinds of pauses in the speech uh, fluency which is able to express easily now fluency has ability or fluency is uh, known as the ability of expression of expressing your ideas and feelings for your um, audiences expression is transforming of ideas into words and content is meaning or substance of the speech so these are some of the parameters of uh, evaluation in your speed uh, in your speech uh, that you are supposed to you know uh, take care of while you are addressing or while you are listening to someone with empathy now to speak and to speak well are two things a fool may talk but a wise man speaks so uh, you are not uh, in a process of only speaking you are in a process of speaking well so make sure that a fool can also uh, talk but there is a way that a wise man talks and a wise man speaks speaking consists of basically two parts uh, the first one has to do with what to speak and the second one has to do with how to speak now this what is important and this how is important and we will concentrate on two of these terms and we will try to you know, elaborate them one by one now what to speak is really very important uh, that is has or that is uh, now what exactly you are going to speak uh, that ha or that is or that has something to do with the content uh, in the language that you are going to use while talking or while you know uh, conveying your ideas to uh, your uh, people uh, now uh, that has something to do with the content development the first step is brainstorming now uh, uh, once you are deciding the word exactly I'm going to speak uh, the first thing that you are going to do is to brainstorm brainstorm about it what I am going to speak that has something to do with the content that you are going to speak in front of the audiences now for example you are uh, attending any meeting and everyone in the meeting has been given an opportunity to speak and you know deliver their thoughts now what exactly is the content that you are supposed to you know deliver the thoughts now if you are supposed to deliver your thoughts during the meeting what exactly you would do is that before your turn uh, you would brainstorm that what exactly I am supposed to speak for brainstorming there are so many things that you can you uh, you can use maybe you can quickly jot down your points or make an outline of the points that you are going to speak 
Now the next bit, step is to choose a presentation format in the storage system. Now uh, 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 that can be if that's a longer process. Uh, so what you can do is that you can use the format or the presentation format or the storage system uh, that you are going to you know use for speaking in front of the audiences. Now if you are being given an ample time for uh, deciding that what exactly you are going to speak, your main focus would be that you are going to decide that what presentation format you would be using that's going to be a verbal presentation and extempore presentation or a PowerPoint presentation and of course your storage system as well. The final uh, step is a uh, presentation itself. Now, if it's a short uh, term uh, speaking, uh, that what you are supposed to speak, maybe you are supposed to speak extempore. So uh, you would speak uh, by you know brainstorming your ideas into your mind quickly. And if you are being given a longer period of time, you would deliver your presentation in such a way that you have prepared that well. So this is what you call what to speak. You are being targeted to, or you are being told that what exactly you are supposed to speak um, and. Uh, you would automatically uh, you know concern or you would automatically concentrate on uh, your content development now let's move to the next part of the speaking and uh, now that you have decided that what you are supposed to speak you would automatically decide on that how uh, you are supposed to speak it speak clearly if you speak at all carve every word before you let it fall now that uh, wonderful uh, quote has been said by Oliver Wendell Hol Holmes uh, who uh, clearly tries to you know tell you that your the selection of the word uh, or the content that you are going to speak is really very important before you actually speak it out now uh, for how to speak there are some guidelines that you are supposed to keep in mind and this is the time that we are going to discuss them one by one the first one is speed the second one is clarity the third one is punctuation the fourth one is pronunciation the fifth one is familiarity the sixth one is fluency and the seventh one is expression and you are supposed to you know keep in mind all of them once you are going to work on the process that how you are supposed to speak in front of the audiences Speed is the number of words per minute, while most Indians speak at 170 to 180 words per, uh, per minute. Their for foreign counterparts speak 110 to 120 words per minute. Slowing down on the rate of speed is the first step towards better speech. Now uh, you must work on the rate of speed, uh, rate of speed, um, uh, your uh, rate of speed uh, of your speech uh, before you actually concentrate on that how exactly you are supposed to speak. So remember that the slower you would speak, the, automa the more uh, understandable you would become for your audiences. So you are supposed to work on first of all your uh, speed uh, or speech rate. Uh, try to you know uh, slow it down a little bit so that your audiences or this uh, your receivers they can understand the content clearly the next uh, the next thing that you are supposed to keep in mind is clarity uh, if audible uh, now clarity basically has something to do with it if you are audible and if you are free of distortion now speech should be loud enough to carry to all the listeners now this loudness should be there judge the uh, acoustics of the room now if uh, you are supposed to you know speak without having any uh, handphone or without having any um, microphone uh, try to see or ch try to check the acoustics that uh, uh, till uh, which uh, steer or till which share you can or your voice can reach so this is what you are actually supposed to concentrate on voice clarity can be mastered with regular practice now uh, you can uh, clarify or you can you know bring clarity in your voice if you are going to uh, practice it again and again the next category is pronunciation. Pronunciation is the utterance of the speech. Uh, always remember that English is not phonetic. That means that we do not always say a word the same way that we spell it. So uh, English is basically not phonetic. The way we say the word that would you know become very different while you are well, while we are speaking it in the language or we are speaking or we are using it in the conversation. So the pronunciation of the word uh, is not the way. Uh, it looks like like the word is honest right uh, now this H is silent and we call it honest otherwise uh, if we would have concentrated on the phonetics that is the sound uh, unit that would have become honest 
So that's the wrong way of pronouncing it. The language is not the way uh, or, uh, or we are supposed to stick to the uh, phon phonetics uh, in the language. That is more, uh, much more than that and we are supposed to concentrate on it really very clearly. The next thing that you are supposed to uh, concentrate on is the use of a good, good uh, dictionary or work with your trainer to correct your pronunciation. For that, I must share a very good web link with you. That is uh, www.forvo.com. Now, what exactly you can do is that if you have any problem in pronouncing any word, you, what you can do is you can uh, uh, just you know log on to this URL link, uh, insert your word in the uh, in the box, uh, and then click on the pronunciation button, and then you would see the display, uh, uh, or you would hear the correct pronunciation of the word in the language. So this is how you can also work on the pronunciation, uh, or you can also help yourself improve your pronunciation skills very clearly. The next category is punctuation. Punctuation is the use of the various kinds of the pauses. Uh, pauses uh, at the full stops, pauses at commas, pauses at semicolons, and pauses at question marks. So these are the kinds of the pauses uh, of, uh, which you are supposed to you know, concentrate on uh, during your verbal communication. There is another uh, parameter uh, of uh, how you are supposed to work on your uh, language is uh, familiarity. Now familiarity is the acquaintance with the words used. Uh, first of all, uh, it has something to do with learning new words. Uh, secondly, it has something to do with using known words in new contexts. And thirdly, it's understanding context and situations before reading again. So this is how you develop your familiarity with different things. Another parameter of how you are supposed to work on your language is fluency, which is ability to express easily. That how uh, fluent enough you are in conveying your ideas and emotions and feelings to the others. Now, developing fluency is a matter of having all the other parameters in place. Uh, fluency basically indicates that a comfortable working ability with the language has been established. Now, it means that you are familiar with the words in the language, you are familiar with the content of the language, you are familiar with the structure of the language to convey your ideas and your thoughts to the next person easily without any uh, uh, hurdles or without any obstacles. So in other words, it means that you are basically comfortable with the language and language allows you or language provides you the room uh, to give your uh, ideas uh, to the next person easily. The next category is expression. Expression is basically transforming of ideas into words and also the outward manifestation of a mood or the disposition of a way of words. Expression of different feelings with words, word stress, tone, pitch and inflection. Now this expression can also be your para-verbal communication that basically focuses on uh, how do you put stress on different words, how do you put intonation, your tone, your pitch, your voice, quality would automatically reveal the idea uh, to the listener that how exactly you do you feel about uh, uh, or how exactly you are feeling about the situation. So your expression has more to do with how uh, you utter things uh, and how do you say things or how do you communicate your ideas to the others. Now the next category is uh, non-verbal communication. Now that we are done with the verbal communication that we have talked thoroughly about the listening and speaking practices. Uh, in the listening we have uh, talked about two major categories. The first one is empathetic listening and the second one is sympathetic listening. Uh, sympathetic listening is the sharing of uh, uh, the ideas uh, or the sharing of the feelings. However, empathetic listening has something to do with the acknowledgement of the feelings or the ideas. Uh, the second category is known as uh, your speaking in which we have seen that what to speak that basically concentrates on the content and the second category is how to speak that that has got some parameters that we have discussed so far uh, in in a in a longer detail now uh, the uh, the next uh, category of today's lecture is uh, non verbal communication now it is possible to communicate um, as, uh, as so far we had been talking about the verbal communication and we had been trying to you know communicate through words now if all the words run out and I am supposed to convey my ideas with you uh, without saying any word like with sometimes with hand movement with, with eye contact. So do you understand anything?
Not at all. So is it possible to communicate without words? Uh, studies show that over, a, over half of your messages is carried uh, through non-verbal elements. But sometimes it is really very important to you know, uh, add the two the categories together uh, to see that how effectively you can communicate with people. Now your appearance, the way you appear in front of the people, your body language, your tone and the pace of your voice are the four things that would fall under the category of non-verbal communication. Now let's discuss non-verbal category in detail. The first and foremost category that has something to do with your first impression uh, or your physical appearance or your appearance in, in front of the people is known as your first impression. Uh, we know the importance of the first impression like most of us we say that first impression is the last impression. So the way you look at people give you one impression and that is the first impression of the people. But first impressions happen every time we initiate the communication. So uh, first impression is the thing uh, uh, whenever, whenever we are going to start communication or communicating with someone, their first impression would be uh, the last impression on your minds. Before someone possess, uh, proce processes or verbal messages, she has taken in our appearance. The first thing is the appearance, registered or enthusiasm and sincerity, uh, noted or tone of voice and processed all into the non-verbal message. Uh, so this is what your uh, first impression basically carries. Now, uh, your first impression is being projected uh, through the powerful image. Now, how powerful it can be that how would you like to sound? Uh, how would you like to sound and how would you like to you know, appear in front of the audience? How would you like to look and how would you like to look and sound both? The name of uh, difference is the image gap. Projecting an image that is consistent with the person you want to be significant, significantly improves your ability to develop trust and rapport. Now, uh, your first impression will be standing on that how you want to look and how you want, uh, how uh, did you look or sound to the next person and that is kind of, you know, Im uh, building a powerful image in front of the people. Now, uh, if uh, uh, once you would be going into your practical lives, you would see that in your business, it is really very important to build a powerful image in front of the audiences. Uh, it uh, basically has something to do with developing the trust and rapport with the people. The more good and the more uh, lively and the more friendly you are going to be with the people, the more comfortable the people would become in talking to you and the more good rapport you would create with them. The people would trust you more the more you are going to be honest with them. Tell them about facts. Tell, uh, tell them about realities. Do not uh, give and do not make wrong or false promises that you know keep them somewhere else or that you know take their attention somewhere else rather try to talk about the facts uh, give them the uh, actual scenario without uh, wasting or without you know uh, um, uh, taking uh, liberties uh, of or without taking advantages of their situation now again talking about the first impression and we also thoroughly talked about that your first impression is going to be the powerful image in front of the audiences that is being developed uh, through uh, your trust and rapport that you built with them. Your first impression basically includes the dress and grooming. Uh, so your dress and how you have groomed up yourself, uh, your voice, uh, of course your voice would be another thing that is involved there. Uh, how you are supposed to you know shake hands with them, the more warm and welcoming you are going to be, the more they are going to like you. Uh, eye contact, uh, how much and how often do you keep eye contact with them and your body posture, the way you are standing in front of them and the way uh, you carry yourself in front of them. Now, a positive first impression make communications much easier and more comfortable. Negative first impressions can cut off a relationship before it really gets started. So, we have talked about the two kinds of the positive first impression and the negative first impression. So, if you are being positive and pleasant, of course, a relationship would grow. And if you are being negative uh, uh, or you are being presenting the negative first impression, of course, uh, you, uh, your relationship would fall out. Many people give up rather than trying to reserve, reverse the other people's negative impression. So uh, this is how uh, people usually give up uh, rather than, you know, uh, trying to build relation between uh, themselves and the other people. Now, first, ex uh, first impression has uh, something to do with your accent. 
your accent should be clear uh, and clearly understandable by the next person do not round off your mouth again and again so that uh, or sometimes it, it really becomes very difficult for the next person to understand what exactly you are talking monotone and weak voice like if you are talking in the same tone throughout nobody would understand that what exactly you are talking about there should be a proper uh, rise and fall and proper stress uh, on your tone and the words that you are using and sometimes the weak voice can also let uh, or make the listener lose their uh, interest in the conversation poor vocabulary if you are being using the same words again and again and you do not use any innovative words or you bring in the innovative or creative ideas into your conversation cold and limp handshake so if you are being very cold and haughty towards the next person that can also become one of, uh, one of the first impression for them lower quality with inappropriate colors messy dressing style and dirty shoes so, um, that's going to create a very bad impression of yours in front of the audiences sell them eye contact you know if you are being you know trying to hide or avoid this eye contact with the people that can also become another uh, bad uh, example of the first impression poor posture bad hygiene creates a barrier so it, all of these things basically are the barriers between uh, the sender and the receiver that can create or you know lose your first impression in front of them now for projecting a powerful image the response you receive from the world around you is a measure of your success in interpersonal relations from the beginning to the end of every transaction with another person you are on a stage now this world is a stage as being said by shakespeare uh, now you are on the stage uh, presenting your ideas and uh, your feelings to the people now you are the actor and all of them they are uh, your spectators now they are watching you and they want to see that what is going uh, and what is coming up next and you are going to build your that powerful image uh, that would uh, tell them clearly uh, that how uh, they want to look at you every word every gesture every expression and every dim uh, dim uh, dim impression is being seen and evaluated by your spectators by your audiences therefore be careful and respectful generally so you are going to be to build this um, uh, rapo and the trust you are supposed to be very very careful and you are supposed to be very very respectful there is a language of gestures also that is also again your non verbal communication body language and non verbal communication are transmitted through eyes face hands arms legs and the posture that is your first sitting and walk in each individual isolated gestures is like a word in the sentence the way you pronounce the word in the different sentences each individual's non verbal expression or these isolated gestures convey you different ideas it is difficult and isolated dangerous to interpret uh, and of itself therefore consider the gesture in the light of everything uh, else that is going on around you so you are going to interpret everything that is going on around you now these gestures they do not stand in isolation they are related to the whole uh, scenario uh, or the whole situation that is going on there first of all talking about your eyes these are basically the windows of your soul excellent indicators and they are also the excellent indicators of your feelings uh, you have shifty eyes beady eyes and look for a look of steel demonstrate awareness honest person has a tendency to look you straight in the eye when speaking now if you are being very honest now try to see if the person is talking to you and he is looking into your eye try to uh, see that these people they are um, very honest because they have this faith and trust in themselves that they are speaking right at least listeners accept it like that so uh, if you are being listening to someone so try to see that if the person is speaking to you and he has his eye contact really very strong with you uh, so how would you feel about them that why are they so confident to look into your eye because they have been talking about facts so this is how the world sees it and this is how uh, we see it as a, a normal human being now eyes uh, people basically avoid eye contact with other person when they are uncomfortable when they are being asked the uncomfortable uh, questions uh, from them so uh, sometimes eye contact uh, is uh, or eye contact gets uh, or there is a barrier between the eye contact once the uncomfortable questions are being asked between the individuals try to reduce tension and build trust rather than increase tension so your eyes are one indicator that would build the powerful rapport 
the ra raising of one eyebrow show disbelief and two show surprise now if you are raising your two eyebrows it means that you are surprised and if you are raising one eyebrow it means that you have uh, this disbelief people are classified as right lookers and left lookers now let's see which one you are right lookers are more influenced by logic and uh, precision left lookers are found to be more emotional subjective and uh, suggestible so if you are more fond of looking onto your right it means that you are more influenced by logic and precision um, uh, however if you uh, are more fond of looking onto the left side it means that you are found uh, you are uh, found to be more emotional subjective and uh, suggestible now that we have talked about our eyes now let's move on to how your face expresses your feelings in or how your face reveals you in front of different people the face is one of the most reliable indicators of person's attitudes emotions and feelings by analyzing facial expressions interpersonal attitudes can be uh, discerned and feedback obtained some people try to hide their true emotions the term poker face describes them so uh, there is a poker face uh, there are those people who try to you know Uh, hide their personal feelings uh, or their facial expressions uh, from the people if they are being very sad they would try to laugh a lot so that the people they won't get to know that uh, why uh, that they are um, from inside they are really very hurt or they are very very really very sad so uh, basically your face basically uh, reveals your attitudes Uh, the way if you are interested in the conversation or not your face would automatically tell that uh, your emotions if you are happy about something or if you are sad about something that would automatically be revealed through your face and again your feelings go the same way common facial gestures are frowns um, uh, it uh, reveals unhappiness and anger smileys it they reveal happiness sneers they reveal dislike and disgust uh, clenched jaws they reveal tension and anger pouting lips they reveal sadness like this now moving on to another category of the non verbal communication that is your hands uh, tightly clenched hands usually indicate that person is uh, experiences undue pressure like you are doing this thing again and again so it means that you are tightly clenching your hand it means that you are receiving an undue pressure it may be difficult to relate to this person because of his tension and disagreement uh, superiority and authority are usually indicated when you are standing and joining your hands behind your back uh, once you uh, put your hands on your back uh, so it uh, it uh, strongly indicates that you are standing in front of someone who is superior or who is elder to you rubbing gently behind or beside the ear with the index finger or rub, or rubbing the eye usually means the other person is uncertain about what you are saying so if you are talking or if i am talking to you continuously and you keep on rubbing your uh, ear with your index finger and sometimes you keep on you know uh, rubbing your eye uh, it means that you are uncertain about the, what i am talking leaning back with both hands supporting the head usually indicates a feeling of confidence and superiority the way you would have seen your bosses sitting in your offices like this, this so leaning back uh, and waiting for that you would step in there then they are going to scold you uh, so this is what you call um, uh, this um, uh, hand movement is known as uh, showing or displaying the uh, superiority or the confidence cupping one or both hands over the mouth especially when talking may well indicate the person is trying to hide something like this and putting your hand to your cheek or stroking your chin generally portrays thinking it trust and uh, consideration like sitting like this and you know uh, doing like this again then fingers bent across the chin or below the mouth most often shows critical evaluation like this like you are pondering over something maybe you are watching a tv maybe you are watching a maybe you are reading from something maybe you are watching a news channel so this is how your hand movements would automatically tell uh, uh, the people around that how exactly you are feeling like you must have uh, seen people asking you kya soch rahe ho and what exactly you are thinking about so this is what you call uh, your hand movements tell uh, what exactly you are doing now the arms and the legs if you have cro crossed arms tend to uh, signal defensiveness now if you have you these uh, crossed arms they would strongly indicate that you are being defensive they seemingly act as a protective guard against an anticipated attack or a fixed position which the other person would rather not move uh, conversely arms open and extended towards you generally indicate openness and acceptance like this 
Now the arms and the legs. Now crossed legs tend to seem the disagreement. Now if have your uh, legs crossed so tightly, it means that you disagree with something, uh, with someone or something. Now if you have your um, uh, foot moving continuously, it's another indicator that you strongly disagree with the thing. People who tightly cross their legs and seem to saying that they disagree with what you are saying or doing. So those people who cross their legs tightly, it means that they disagree with the stuff that is going around. Uh, they, that is going on around them. Uh, if the people have tightly crossed legs and tightly crossed arms, their inner attitude is usually one of the extreme negativity towards what is going on around them. So it also reveals another very negative impression that what exactly is going around them. It may be difficult to get uh, agreement of those people who have uh, tightly crossed their arms as well as their legs. So it brings us to the end of today's lecture. I hope that you must have enjoyed listening to the conversation of uh, how you are supposed to develop your verbal communication and non-verbal communication. First of all, talking about the verbal communication, it is really very important that you understand the relationship between uh, speaking and listening. So we have thoroughly discussed that what exactly is listening and how is it related to speaking. The more actively you would listen, uh, the more uh, active uh, uh, speaker you would become. For listening, we have categorized listening into the two major parts. The so first one is empathetic listening and the second one is sympathetic listening. Sympathetic listening is a kind of a listening that is being used for sharing uh, your feelings and thoughts with other people. However, uh, so, um, empathetic listening is acknowledgement of uh, uh, the ideas that the other people are telling you. Uh, we have also discussed it was exactly it's speaking of course everyone can speak even a fool can also speak but but speaking wisely is something that differentiates or that make you different from other people so for that we have discussed two major categories that what to speak and how to speak what to speak basically uh, focuses on the content of the speech that you are going to speak and uh, how to speak basically has something to do with uh, 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 putting your focus on speed, stress, intonation, pauses, punctuation, pronunciation and so on. So uh, we have also talked about the non-verbal uh, expression or the non-verbal communication in which we have thoroughly discussed the first impressions which are being built uh, by the people. Uh, now the first impression if it's the last, last impression it means that um, your first impression should strongly indicate uh, that uh, you are or you must try to you know build this powerful image in front of different people now your dress and grooming your voice your handshake your body contact your body posture your hands uh, your arms your legs all of them they reveal different categories or they reveal uh, different kinds of uh, you know messages uh, to the reader and uh, try to make them very clear for the reader because it is really very important for them to understand that how did you differentiate between these two categories uh, simultaneously. So it brings us uh, to the end of today's lecture. I hope that you must have enjoyed listening to uh, verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Uh, we would meet again in, uh, in, a, in, in the next lecture with the theories of communication in which would, we would thoroughly discuss uh, that how uh, this uh, communication skill or the structure of communication skill has developed. Here is a list of references from where the material was being taken. Uh, I am Anila Noshin saying goodbye to you. I would see you in the next class with another exciting episode on communication skills. Uh, till then, take very good care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.